Yo guys, what's up? It is Nate Egan from Egan Visuals and today I'm bringing you a new tutorial on how to do slide transitions. So if you've seen any of my videos through Instagram or YouTube, you've definitely seen me do this in pretty much everything I've ever done. Um, in the new Justin Stone music video, uh, Lungs, that I recently edited, you definitely see in like the beginning and uh, near the end. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and then we'll get right into it. <laughs> Alright, so what you want to do is you want to take the two clips that you want to do the transition on and then you want to put them right next to each other. Now, you're probably thinking that what I'm going to tell you is go to like video transitions and you know add you know uh, a push slide transition. But if you really look at this, um, okay, hold on. If you really look at this, it just looks super, you know, slow and just... I don't know, it just doesn't look stylish, it just doesn't look smooth at all. And I know you can speed it up, so how I do it is first I go to the first clip obviously, then you want to go to the end of the first clip. Now like I said in the last video tutorial, uh, if you don't know anything about keyframing I highly suggest to go uh, YouTube it real quick because I'm not going to explain it too much in this. So yeah. Alright, so here's how I usually keyframe the transitions. So what I'll do is I'll start at the end of the clip, I'll toggle animation on scale, and then we'll do three keyframes back, and then add a keyframe. So, oh wait, yeah, and then you'll go back two more, and add another keyframe. Whoop, my bad. Alright, so what this does is this first keyframe to the left and front, um, it's going to stay like whatever scale you want. And then the purpose, wait, what the hell did I do here? Hold up. Okay, so the purpose of the middle keyframe is to kind of smoothly transition into the zoom in. If you have one keyframe and then have the next keyframe like zoomed in all the way, it just does this weird, you know, non smooth transit or uh, zoom in. Like you want to have a very, you know, start slow and then get faster. So usually what I'll do for the scale on the, s the middle one is I'll do 120. And then for the third one, I'll usually do whatever looks fine. I'll just just drag it. I usually just drag it randomly, to, to be honest. Uh, 180 would probably look fine. All right, so if we look at what we have so far, we pretty much just have a very pretty smooth basic zoom in, which is perfect. So now what we want to do is you want to go to position and then toggle animation on there. So what we'll do is we'll we'll have it end on the last frame or second to last frame I guess on here because if you go one more to the right it's already on the next clip. So we'll start here. And then for this, I I usually don't No, actually no, I do. I use the same method as the bottom row. So we'll do, you know, two back and three back. So for the second one, the middle one, you want to start making it slowly slide to the side that you want it to go. And then for the last one, you want it to have it like really slide over. It's pretty much as far as you can go to the edge of your scale that you're at. So now we'll have this. So it looks kind of weird right now, but just wait. Alright, so what we want to do now is we want to take what we did to the first clip and the ending of the first clip and apply it to the beginning of the second clip, but do it backwards. So we're going to go to the second clip and toggle animation. And then you want to start with um, around the number they used in the ending of the last clip, or you can just make a new one. You just want to make sure it's zoomed in so that when it's coming in from the opposite side, so like for example, I slid it to the left. So now this clip is going to come in from the right to make it look like it's a slide transition. So you want to have it zoomed in so that when it when it had like starts from the right side, it won't have like black bars on the side. So we'll start the scale high and then we'll kind of uh, I do this thing where I zoom it in a little bit more because they keep the continuity flow together. So like when something's going really fast it's not gonna just stop right away it's gonna slowly slow down so we're just gonna go ahead and let this 
you want to like move like a bunch of keyframes back and then have it go back to the normal uh, scale. So something like that. That's way too quick. So if it seems like it scales out way too quick and it looks weird, um, just move the keyframe back as much as you want. All right. So as you can see, it, it's kind of there, but it's like missing that kind of flow. Oh, that part's messed up. Let me fix that real quick. Alright. Yeah, so if you see like black bars on the side when you play it back, just go back in each frame and just, just fix it a little bit and it'll look fine. Okay. So now obviously what this is missing is the second clip has the zoom in, but it doesn't have the positioning. So we'll go to the first frame, toggle animation on position, and then this time you want to start it from the right side, all the way to the right side as much as you can go without it having black bars. And then you want to have it a couple of keyframes, move it more towards the center. Um, usually the center is like 960, so just to keep that in mind while you're uh, moving it. And then, then you want to like keyframe it back a little bit to like have it slow down like that so boom looks a little bit smoother but it's still missing something obviously so another thing we can do to make this look better is we can add blurs so that you don't see you know this like just instant cut to the next clip so what I usually use is I I type in blur and I use directional blur on both clips so on the first clip, you want to add the blur to the when it starts zooming in and sliding. So it would be like right around here. Uh, don't change the don't toggle animation on direction, but instead do it only on the blur length. So it would start like right around here as it starts to like zoom in. That's when you want to make it start blurring. So usually I'll do like a couple keyframes into the zoom. So we'll use something like. 20 or something. So if you look at it, it looks kind of weird because the blur direction is going upwards. So to make it sideways like we want it, you want to make this 90 degrees or 90. So now as you can see, it looks a little more like it's, you know, like camera movement, just camera blur. Now to make this look a lot smoother, you want to add directional blur to the next clip and then do what you did before but backwards. So we want to do 90 degrees. Start with the blur length at 20 where we left off. And then kind of have it keyframe out and let it uh, let it fade out. So like that. Well that's way too long. As you can see if you put it too far back uh, you don't want the blur to, you want the blur to end when the movement of the camera ends, like right around here. I forgot to mention that. I thought I was using a different blur for a second. So like that. Looks a lot smoother. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, obviously there's a lot of improvements you can make to this style. Uh, if you guys are interested in more techniques on how to do transitions and smooth transitions, uh, comment below. I got a lot of great feedback on the last tutorial, so I'm really thankful for that. Thank you. Subscribe if you want to have more tutorials and leave a like if this helped you at all.